All right, so as you can see, we have nothing in this bay today. We're working in the shop and this bay is empty. Doesn't mean that we're lacking on business by any means. We've been focusing all of our attention on this little beautiful orange and cream bubble window Isetta. Shall we dare call it a creamsicle? We might. So last week, I had a lot of interest in the Dynastart replacement. The Dynastart is the starter and the generator on this little compact little one-cylinder engine that resides in the side of the BMW Isetta. A few of the commenters couldn't get a good view of the Isetta because I had it all covered up with tarps. I try to keep stuff clean, and when I have cars above cars, I don't want any oil drips onto nice white or cream colored vinyl upholstery. So this is what makes a bubble window I said a, a bubble window. Look at the size of that window, would you? It is huge. It's glass. It's not plexiglass. It's real glass. Uh, this car has a lot of accessories. You can see it has the chrome rack uh, that keeps items secure from hitting the window and it also has a little cargo net to keep items like your groceries from sliding forward. The one thing I, I, well, two things. One thing I really love about these is how they look. They're just gorgeous. They're iconic bubble cars from the 50s, and this doesn't get more bubbly. However, in real life, these things are terrible to drive. There's just no ventilation. Uh, the only ventilation you have is this little wing window here, which is facing the wrong direction. It doesn't scoop air in. It just lets air out, and... This car is not equipped with the tropical door. In other words, the vents on the door. So there's just a sweat box, basically. It's like a little aquarium in there. You just get hot. You do have the top, which you can open, and these side windows. But I like driving sliding window. I said it was much better. Anyhow, the, that's just a personal opinion on my part. I think these look great, but they're, I wouldn't want to own one. Um, and this one is uh, extra special because it does have the... I believe it's stainless, maybe it's aluminum Z trim that's continuous around the car and it's two two tone paint. It's a beautiful car. I'm changing the oil right now. So I've got it glub 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 dripping out of there. Uh, it takes 2050, it's air cooled, just two quarts. And um, once I get the oil in there, I'll start it up and we'll take it for a drive. But I've done all my tests. It, um, it starts and charges just fine. And that's been a real Achilles heel with this car since the customer has owned it. I think it had a broken wire um, someplace in the Dynastart. Um, I, never, I re never really figured out where, but it was always a slow starter. It would get to the compression stroke and the starter would just stall. You'd have to get out of the car, open the engine cover, which is this, and rotate the engine by hand, just like I'm doing here with your fingers, to get it off a compression stroke, then go back in the car, turn the key, and then you could go. Let's look at the interior here. Uh, this is how you get to the inside when I said it. It's like a refrigerator. Just pops open. And then you have our beautiful interior, which is covered up with working cloths. So sorry you don't get to see the whole interior. Uh, this is a pretty clean car, and I don't want to get my greasy stuff on it. So we got it covered up. Anyhow, let's finish up with this oil change, and we'll take it for a drive. I'll give you some more specs uh, once we hit the road. All right, so you can see that I like working on old antique German cars here at the shop. We're looking at a 1957 DKW. Next to that is a 73 or 72 Bavaria. And up there is my Lloyd Alexander. All three of those, the Lloyd being cut up, that is a green one, uh, are old, old German cars. And uh, I love those things. And that's what we're doing today, is giving this little BMW Isetta a little love. And uh, let's do a walk around and a little informative kind of background on this thing for those of you viewers who have never seen an Isetta before or know what they are. Uh, a lot of people think they are three-wheel cars. They actually have two wheels in the back. And you can see there's a live axle there. That's a chain case. They are chain driven and that is a live axle. There's a brake on just that side only. So being it's a live axle, it stops the whole rear end. There's only three brakes on the car, one for each front wheel and one for the rear axle. Again, this is a pretty special car. It's very highly restored. It has a lot of chrome parts. 
I don't know that it's over restored, but it's definitely nicer than if you were to buy one back in 1957. Um, it is the bubble window. In other words, it has these triangular side windows that do not open. The slider ones have like closet doors that open here and allow better ventilation. Um, and it also has a nice big huge bubble window in the back, which the slider ones just have like a little oval. So that's kind of the differences on the slider versus the bubble. Uh, they're all Isetas and there's many Isetas made in very many countries and they all have a different flavor to them. Um, this one is made for the USA, so it has the 7-inch round headlights and the overrider bumpers. All right, well, we just finished up our repairs on the Dynastart. Uh, we changed the oil in the little 13-horsepower, four-stroke, single-cylinder engine. I believe it has a 19 or 20-millimeter Bing carburetor. It has just one coil there and normally a set of points here on the crankshaft. This one has been upgraded can't see myself there. I need to polish that a little bit uh, to electronic ignition. Uh, this is the fan. Uh, there's a vent here on the engine cover, which is laying in the back of the car there. That'd be the hood, the engine cover. It draws cool air through the side of the car, through these tines or these blades, and then the air is pushed up over the top of the engine across the cylinder head, which has fins on it, and then it's exhausted on the other side. The exhaust also is on the other side, and we'll take a look at that in a second. It has four speeds forward, one reverse, and again, it's a chain drive system. It has a, a neat suspension system. I don't know if I can show you that or not, but we'll go around this side and look. Here's your little dual exhaust tip. It does have a long muffler. It comes across. I don't know if you can see the downpipe. That pipe right there, the big one, goes into that long glass pack you do and then out this uh, dual exhaust tip and your transmission is there which then goes to a chain drive. So this one is equipped with radial tires and it should drive pretty nice. Speaking of driving it, I think we should do that. I haven't checked the fuel level. I probably should do that before we go and then uh, I think we'll start it and go for a drive. So let me do a few checks and uh, get your driving gloves and goggles on. Let's go for a ride. Okay, I had to get my flashlight and check the level visually by opening the cap on the tank and giving it a little shake. BMW Isettas do not have fuel level gauges and it would be most embarrassing if I took you on this test drive and we ran out of gas someplace. So let's, uh, well, got some grease on there or something. Uh, let's take a little drive. Uh, the way you would get into a BMW Isetta is pretty obvious. The door is open. You kind of get in, step in, and slide your butt to the back. And then uh, you see the gear pattern here. It's an H pattern, although it's a bit of a dog leg. So you got one, two, three, four, and reverse is kind of dog laid off to the side there. And then these are for your choke and for your gear controls. So we're going to pull the door shut and we'll get into our driving position here, which means our feet are going to be above the pedals. And then we close the door, give it a latch there, and we get one of our cigarettes and we light it. <laughs> no, that's not what we do. Those are plastic cigarettes. They're some type of prop. Uh, the key is right here. You see our generator light. We're going to give it a crank. Fired right up. And get to our gear shift here. Choke. She's running a little rough. Hold on a second here. Oh. Let her idle up for just a second here. There she goes. Had to give her just a little bit of gas and let her warm up. So we are in neutral. We're going to drop her down in the first, take the brake off. The clutch on this one is a little spongy. I'm not used to that. Let's see how it works. Whoop. Clutch is way different on this one than I'm used to, so sorry about that. We just popped the clutch. Make sure the brakes work. They're a little squeaky. We're going to look for cars. No cars coming. And of course, I just popped the clutch and killed it. Let's try that again. Yeah, this has got a really light clutch. It's feather. The 
original BMW I said is did not have an orange wheel. This one somebody's repainted. Most of the wheels are cream. Take it for a little drive here. Spin it around. Make sure all the gears work. This car hasn't been driven for a long time because of the starting issues. I'm going to drop it back down into first. Clutch is so touchy. I'm not used to that at all. Everything seems to be working good. What a fun little car. That's pretty sweet. So we're going to put her neutral so they're idle here. You can listen to the motor. Put the brake on. Open the door. This door springs open. Let's you out. What a sweet little ride. That's super fun. Let's listen to the exhaust. Really a nice little car. Well, thank you for coming along for a ride. I hope you enjoyed the, the drive. Sorry, I'd, my big old boot uh, popped the clutch on this thing. I didn't realize it had such a light little clutch. But every car is a little different. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out this little BMW I said. We'll see you next time.